Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I would like to offer my thoughts on Dr. Curry's diagnosis of Amber Heard's borderline histrionic personality disorders and go over the subject of whether Amber has PTSD or not. Amber Heard was originally diagnosed with borderline personality, narcissistic personality, as well as sociopathy by their previous counselor so I was surprised to see a little bit of a different diagnosis by Dr. Curry when it comes to histrionic personality and I actually don't see Amber as somebody with histrionic personality and I want to explain why. First of all Dr. Curry did a fantastic job at really explaining in depth borderline personality, the behavior to be expected in borderline, the traits and I would agree a hundred percent that Amber exhibits borderline behavior. Now moving forward to histrionic personality disorder, a lot of professionals in the field actually think that histrionic personality disorder should be removed from the DSM-5 completely because it just overlaps too much with other personality disorders of the cluster B group and it doesn't hold together very well and I actually do agree with this. I wasn't fully satisfied with the reasons that Dr. Curry gave for Amber having histrionic personality because when being asked why she thought that Amber had histrionics, she mentioned that Amber was overly expressive, exaggerating in every story that she was telling her. This could actually be explained by borderline personality, it could be explained by a manipulative narcissist that is trying to add credibility to their story. Even vulnerable narcissism shows this exaggeration of the events to play the victim. In Amber, it's due to her borderline personality, how intensely she feels her emotions. She has this sense of entitlement that comes from narcissism. That those things combined make her be more expressive and dramatic when she's trying to tell the events. She really needs to get this point across. I don't necessarily see this as being histrionic, but more coming from that borderline and a narcissistic root. She also mentions how the main drive of histrionic personality disorder is to be the center of attention, experience extreme discomfort when not being the center of attention. But this is also true for people with narcissistic personality disorder. And I do think that there is a link in between not being the center of attention to that terror of being abandoned. If she's not the center of attention, it means that she can potentially be abandoned and that causes that reactivity and that behavior to being the center of attention again. Another point Dr. Curry mentions is that somebody with histrionic personality has, and I'm gonna paraphrase, this type of like people pleasing behavior to please their counselors and give them gifts because they don't want judgment and to have this flowerly type speech and I don't see any of that in Amber. When I observe her speak in all her interviews, she seems to me that she has this underlying anger issue that she's about to explode at any given moment in rage. Another trait of histrionic is that the person has this sensual energy about them. They're very flirtatious, very seductive and although Amber Heard is extremely, extremely beautiful and attractive, I don't see that sense of sensuality in her when she talks. I don't see the flirtatiousness. I just don't see the demeanor of somebody that has histrionic personality because remember people with histrionic personality act this way not just with their romantic interests but with just about anyone. I do think that physical attractiveness and sensuality are two different things and one of them comes more from behavior and the other one just comes from well how, how lucky we are to be born in a prettier body and Amber was just so lucky to be born in an absolutely stunning face and body but that does not mean that she aligns with that particular criteria in histrionic. While people with histrionic personality do use their physical appearance to draw attention, so do narcissists. 
so do people with borderline personality. With all that said, since histrionic personality is still in the DSM-5, I'm gonna treat it as a very valid disorder because that's what it is. Now let's see if Amber meets five of those criteria. So far, so far I only see her meeting the being uncomfortable when she's not the center of attention. Then I also see her meeting shallow expressions of emotions, uses physical appearance to draw attention to herself, and the only other trait that I see is being very dramatic. And those so far are not five of the criteria. Something else extremely interesting that I found out is that when going back to somebody's five-factor model of personality, this is the way in which psychologists, clinicians determine personalities. Somebody with histrionic personality disorder would have a specific type of five-factor model profile. A person with histrionic personality would be low in agreeableness and Amber is low in agreeableness. However, typically somebody with histrionic would be high in the facets of trust and high in the facets of altruism and if you've watched any of her behavior you can just see that Amber's trust is very low as it's very common for people with borderline personality to be very low in trust and also Amber's altruism is very low so I do think this is crucial to really determine whether she truly has histrionic or not Let's move on to the subject of PTSD. Dr. Curry kept saying how she was faking her PTSD symptoms. I do think that she could have very easily had PTSD from childhood trauma, for example, but that her trying to fake all these symptoms to accentuate her PTSD symptoms for the evaluation was detrimental to the actual results because the doctor could tell that she was faking it. In fact, in 2011, Bonnie Jacobs said that Amber reported having constant um, dreams about childhood trauma. And actually, it's not uncommon for people who have borderline personality or any other uh, type of personality disorders of the cluster C and cluster B uh, to have grown in abusive homes. I actually know a few people that have a diagnosed borderline personality and almost every single one of them has been diagnosed with CPTSD or PTSD from childhood trauma. One last thing I wanted to mention is that borderline personality disorder as well as antisocial personality disorder are very common in people who use substances. Amber drinks a whether or not she wants to admit it she has a substance use problem it would make sense that she would have these two disorders I do see a few traits that are overlapping in both secondary psychopathy and antisocial personality disorder and I actually do believe that Amber has antisocial personality disorder in order to have antisocial personality you only have to meet three of the criteria the traits that I see in Amber that align with antisocial personality disorder are pathological lying a disregard for right or wrong impulsiveness, irritability, hostility, and being involved in abusive relationships. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.